Hi guys, so I'm going to interview my aunt. Her name is Audrey. She's behind the camera because she doesn't want to be in front of it. So I'm going to ask her questions, what she thinks about Germany from the questions you gave me on Instagram. Thank you guys for sending in your questions. So first question, what are some German stereotypes that first pop into your mind when you think about German stereotypes? Um, directness, no frills. You ask a question, you get it black or white. Direct answers. Direct answers. What do you think of, is that, do you think that's good or bad or what do you think about that? It's just not my culture. Um, Americans tend to not want to hurt anyone's feelings, so you're not really getting a direct response. You're getting a, I don't want to hurt your feelings response. So you'd have to ask me a specific question for me to answer it in the way that an American would, in the way I would think a German would. So do you think Germans can come off as rude sometimes because of their directness? I think they could be interpreted rude because of how short the answers are. Yeah, I think that could be true. Any other German stereotypes that pop into your mind besides directness? That everybody has a German Shepherd. <laughs> What? Really? I'm a dog happened. person, so I think about that. When you think of Germany, what comes to mind besides directness? Well, not knowing a lot about the uh, German culture, we grew up with basically movies that had Germans, and they were always Second World War movies, and there were always like Dobermans and German Shepherds next to a soldier. Hmm. So I always kind of thought that the dogs here, they would all be German dogs like Dobermans and German Shepherds, but because I'm a dog person, I noticed dogs and I saw a variety. So hmm. yeah, when I first got off the train, I noticed Frenchies, French Bulldogs. I saw Jack Russell. Um, so that went away real fast. What is the first big difference you noticed about Germans? You've literally been from the train station to our Airbnb, so I'll, I'll ask again at the end of the trip, but... Um. Well, okay. I was coming off the fast train, and we're in a city um, in West Germany called Cologne, and I wasn't sure if people would understand English, so I was a little lost. And I saw somebody that looked official, and I said, excuse me, do you speak English? And he said, yes, it perfect English. Not even, not even like with <laughs> mispronounced words. And I asked where the entrance was, and he was very precise and very direct. And he told me that I needed to go downstairs and to the left. In other countries I've been to, you could just walk straight out the door. And I was very confused because going downstairs in other countries, now this is not American, so I'm not comparing with America because we don't have trains at all like this. We have a metro in my town, but that's about it. Because in other countries, downstairs meant subway. So I was really surprised that to get out the door, I had to go downstairs. Which is funny because I wouldn't even think about that because I haven't been living in any other country besides Germany. I've, I've studied in London for one semester, but I can't actually, I don't know, can't remember what that was like. No, it's been a while. Well, underground to me means going down, not going to the street level. And I was also surprised that when I got out of the train station, there were Starbucks <laughs> everywhere, but not just one Starbucks. I think I saw three or four of them. And then what really I loved was how big the dome church was, like so much bigger than what I thought it was going to be. I've never seen a church. Um, so beautiful and so big right there. Impressive. Very impressive. And the people, the people looked like they could be American. They might be. <laughs> no, because it was, it was. This is a super touristic spot right there. But. I didn't hear English though. Mm. I heard German. Okay. Netherlands and German. What did you think <clears throat> about me coming to live and study in Germany? I couldn't think of a reason why you'd want to go all that way just to go to school until I found out that Germany does not have education for profit like in America and that you were going to save $50,000 a year 
to get your master's. That's how what it would cost in America for one year, $50,000. Now that's a reason itself to come to Germany. Yeah. And then when I told that to people, so many people want to come to Germany and <laughs> go to school. It's pretty amazing. Once you find out how the system works in Germany, it's just, you can't imagine why does the U.S. do things as they do, but I know the U.S. is known as well for their really prestigious and good schools, so. But when they questioned me and said, well, that's just for Germans, I said, no, it's international. That's, Anybody can yeah, come to Germany. It's pretty shocking. I learned it's not just Germany, it's like the northern Scandinavian countries are doing this as well, but it's kind of a best kept secret. <laughs> Very much so. But as it turns out, in, if you guys have been following me, I actually quit the master's degree. So the last two years, they haven't been a waste. So I've been learning German instead since I quit the master's degree because I wasn't so happy with it. Um, so if I didn't come to Germany just for my master's degree and I just came here to live, which is what I've been doing the last year, is pretty much just learning German and living in Germany. Um, what do you think about that? I, I think to be able to be dedicated to a language that is so hard for Americans to understand um, and then to learn how many articles you have in the language that I'm very proud of Lamlike for making the effort to stay and to learn this hard language that she will be able to remember the rest of her life. Hopefully. I'll Hopefully. have to keep practicing <laughs> so I don't lose that, but thank you. Uh, what do you think has changed in Germany in the last 50 years? I think what's changed in Germany from the last 50 years, this is just because I've asked people, is to be able to um, have comedy again and not be censored on what they could uh, make jokes about, um, not to offend um, things that have happened in the past in history, and just, you know, for the new generation just to kind of live without um, the sense of a guilt hmm. in their history. What do you think about the Autobahn? <gasps> Oh my god. And do you want to try it out? No. Oh my god. No. <laughs> After what happened to Lamb, like, I don't even want to cross the street without <laughs> holding her hand. That was a special case. But, so from a positive standpoint, for you Germans to be able to drive safely on the Autobahn, you guys could master anything. I think race, racing cars would like be a profession that you could probably get into easily just from being a driver in Germany. Um, pretty skilled. Yeah, very skilled. Tomorrow my German friend's going to drive us <gasps> to the castle. I, I, and he told me when he visited <gasps> Hamburg he was driving 130 miles per oh, hour. No. <laughs> so I'll let him know tomorrow. Oh my gosh. You can't go that fast. We do not like that. <laughs> But, you know. I, you know, I don't mind the fast driving if there's no one around us, but I don't like tailgating. Oh, no. A lot of Americans tailgate and it's scary. Yeah. Germans. I think the German drivers are amazing um, compared to American drivers, I will say that. I, I'm, I'm scared because there isn't skilled drivers where I come from. Well, as Germans have been teaching me, their test takes... It's super expensive, it takes forever, and Americans have a very quick little test, quick driving test, um, and then we get our license. I thought they were joking about how fast they drive. I actually haven't seen it yet. I'm, ex I'm excited to. You know, I'm going to have a lot more opinion tomorrow. <laughs> okay, we'll pause here. Oh my God. When, when it's too fast or something, uh, then you have to, to say that, so it's no problem. <laughs> No, it's probably more dangerous if you go slow. <laughs> What's the name of this car again? Opel. Yeah. Opel. Your water. Your water tastes so good. That's Our tap awesome. water does not taste good in America. You, nobody really drinks it. It won't. They say it won't hurt you, but I tend to disagree because it doesn't taste very good. But your water is like flavorless. Like, like it doesn't have a taste to it. it just feels good. German water. If I leave Germany, that's what I'm going to miss the most. And what's another stereotype you think of Germany? Um, everybody thinks that all Germans are blonde hair, blue eyes. And when I got off the train, um, I did just come from France, so I did see more blondes. We'll see. We'll see how many blondes versus brunettes we see. Has lamb -like changed since moving to Germany? And if so, in which ways? That's a good question. Think. 
Limelight is not as shy as she was before. She's more adventurous. She, she got on a bike and rode to university without a helmet. Now that's <laughs> taking a risk. Now she's I never rode bikes before. I got back on my bike too. So. She got back on the horse, as we say. Yeah. Yeah, she's changed because I never really saw her ride bikes and then to ride to university with the on traffic where the autobahn is. <laughs> There's no autobahn on the oh, way to the university. True. Sorry. <laughs> How about riding in traffic? <laughs> I rode on the autobahn <laughs> on my bike. <laughs> and that's how I got hit by a car. <laughs> I guess your streets aren't all autobahns here. Well, I think I feel safer because in Germany there's allocated uh, areas for bikes to ride. Mm. Which is why the, the most confusing thing for tourists when they first come to Germany, because you don't know it unless you've been living in Germany and you can see the differences on the ground, where the bike lane is and where it's yeah. not. Because in the US we have, we don't have bike lanes on sidewalks. Usually they're on the street. Yeah, and they're not designated. You don't know. Some streets have bike lanes and some don't. That's a good topic. If you were to see, yeah. you know, you, somebody will ask me, Where's a where's a bike where's a bike lane and I'll go oh yeah that street has one but then it's gonna stop yeah it's really then, dangerous to yeah ride a bike it's pretty dangerous the and then you yeah people ride on the sidewalk but it's dangerous too and I'm not really a big traveler when I'm home but something about Germany makes me just want well our we don't really have culture we like, just have one culture we don't even have seasons I mean yeah when Germans go to the U S they're traveling all over the U S yeah, but Americans sure. just kind of stay I mean not for every American but no that's very true. We don't, We're not curious. We don't travel as much in comparison to Germans, I think. Okay. Californians, though, when they go on vacation, they go to Mexico or... Okay. If you ask an American, a typical American, um, where they travel to, this is what they tell you. Yeah, we've, we, we travel. We go to Hawaii. Come on. That's part of the United States. That is actually our 50th state. But, they, but a stereotypical person in America mm -hmm. thinks that that's traveling outside of U.S. And Germans, I guess Germans, what? They go to Spain, Mallorca. <laughs> That's a stereotype, but. She was talking about the Notre Dame in France and said, but sad, it's now kaput. And she's like, oh my gosh, I just spoke German. <laughs> Cause yeah, we don't even realize it, how much German words we use in American English, but there is some. Someone once asked, why do I say gosh when I'm speaking and not, oh my God? Because we're again a society that doesn't want to we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings we don't talk about religion politics uh, certain subjects so that would be under the blanket of hurting somebody's feelings with the religious comment yeah i think that's also why i, I feel better saying oh my gosh Be polite. Being polite. because uh, polite. yeah what my family taught me was that could be offensive to some people who are religious, who if you say, oh my God, then yeah. So I think that's another German American cultural difference. I don't know, maybe, do you guys have the equivalent? I know in Germany you have, oh mein Gott, but I don't know if you guys have the equivalent to another way to say, oh mein Gott, in a, another thing, in a different we, way. We say the F word, some people will say, oh fudge. <laughs> oh yeah, instead of the F word, we say fudge. Well, that's like a child thing, but. Yeah, Americans don't really like the sound of cussing. At least I don't. If someone's cussing a lot, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. I'm going to show my aunt how German windows work. Are you ready? This is the thing that annoys all the Germans because like every American is so obsessed with this. Okay, watch. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we don't have windows like that. That is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's the reason? No, I've never seen anything like that. That's really cool. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm so used to it. I forgot that's like a culture shock. Yeah, we know. I've never saw one. And then to lock it, you push it down to open. And what do you think of there being no um, no screen? No screen on what about bugs. I know bugs just come in. I don't get it. I don't get why Germans do that. Oh. But what you do here is you go to a it's like kind of like Home Depot, and they just buy this thing and you just have to measure yourself and just tape put tape around the edge here and then put a screen on yourself and it that's the cheap way I don't know if, what what the other way is but see we already got a, a fly 
So what is your impression since now that you've been in Germany for two days? Has it changed since the first time we recorded? What is your stereotype from now of Germans? Oh my goodness, so many differences. Uh, unbelievable. I think the most recent was this beautiful day. Everybody was outside. It was a Saturday in Cologne, walking by the Rhine River. What do I see? All these groups of people. Some of them had matching t-shirts and they were doing games and trying to engage the people in the street. And then there was this other scene of these guys that one had a ridiculous green costume that said soccer and there were holes cut out like a robe and people were throwing balls at him like soccer balls. I don't know if it was a bachelor party or they were just it enthusiasts. Was, I feel like it was probably a bachelor party and this was one of the exercises on their list of things to do to publicly humiliate themselves which is a thing I don't know Germans like doing that during their bachelor and bachelorette party. In German it's called the Junggesell Abschiedsfeier. Wow, well, our bachelor parties are a little different. The guys usually go to Vegas and take their mates, their friends, and they have, I guess some of them, they, they have strippers that come and do like dances. That's stereotype. I don't know if yeah. Germans do that or if it's just this, you go with a group of friends and party and humiliate yourselves. Uh, <laughs> it sounds more fun here in Germany. Anyway, I saw lots of groups like that as we were walking. Lamb like pointed out what I was looking at. Backing up, we had just come from a most amazing castle trip and my German friend picked us up and his wife. When I got inside the car and we got on the Autobahn and all of a sudden it was so experience I'd never experienced in my entire life because it's about double the speed of our highest speed on our highway. Yeah. And but then I suddenly felt comfortable because I felt like the driver knew what he was doing, which in America, most most states, some states are known for better drivers, but the state I come from, oh no, we we go very slow there. And then we got to this amazing castle. I, I've seen a lot of castles in different countries. This was the most amazing, beautiful, clean, ornate, but not too ornate, just the scenic beauty around it was so nice. We had an English tour. Because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere where this castle is, so you don't really expect people to be speaking English over here, so I guess we were lucky that we had an English option. And then we ate at a vineyard. I don't know what city it was in, but you'll, you'll, you I'll have put the all the... Okay. I'll put all the clips. And they told me that the fish I ordered, they only catch it in two German rivers once a year and it was so fresh. I never tasted fresh, fish so fresh and the wine, they made their own wine so we also have the wine that we had and it's very very good from this region where they make it. Growl? Like growl something. We are at a beer garden and tasting the Kolsch beer. This is supposed to be the best beer garden in Cologne and they make their own beer here and I've never tasted beer this good actually in I'm not a beer connoisseur, prefer wine, but I'll have a beer once in a while and I really like this beer because it's not too heavy and there's no after aftertaste. So toast in Germany? Prost. Prost. I heard there's two super famous breweries in Cologne or Cologne. So this one is Pefken Brauerei. It's a brewery in English. And I'm tasting my very first Kolsch. Schmeckt gut. I don't really like beer, but I actually I don't mind this one. It's not, it doesn't have that super harsh beer taste for me. It's kind of light. And yeah. No aftertaste. Yeah, I don't know why. It's not bothering me like beer usually does, so it must be good beer. So the thing we learned here is the, it's only a tradition in Cologne. When you're done with your beer, you have to put the, the coaster on top. And that tells the waiter you don't want to get any refills because they will automatically refill your beer. So I learned that from the Google reviews. I'm glad I read that before coming, otherwise we would get our beers filled without even asking. It's Sunday right now, 1.22 p.m. on Sunday. So this is a great time, as you can see, it's not too crowded. We got really nice service from the waiters. I heard, you know, in Germany you have to walk and just sit yourself down and they come. A lot of Americans who don't know this will just 
wait for someone to sit you somewhere. But um, I actually came in and I said, uh, hello, uh, ich möchte zwei Kulsch bestellen, bitte. And I knew that wasn't, I don't know if that was the right thing to do, but we sat down and they immediately brought us our Kulsch. So, yeah, I probably don't recommend doing that on a busy, a busy time though, because, uh, yeah, that might seem a little rude. <laughs> But I think because no one was here, it was okay. Because they were just standing around looking bored, so. Um, we're not going to try the food because we just ate across the street. So I'm going to show you guys what we ate over there. Um, but yeah, because we had German food yesterday. Okay, we're floating above the Rhine. Um. Hello, Cologne. First impressions. There's the dome. There's the holy something Brucke. Holy moly, Ryan. Ryan is looking real big. Hello, Cologne. From the cable car. How many Colonians have done this? There's to be honest, the dome. I'm really scared. Well, it's okay. Okay, <laughs> we're up here. Look at everyone sunbathing. Beautiful day up here, beautiful day. Cologne is beautiful. Uh, yeah. Actually, it'd be really nice if we take a taxi over to the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Who recommended this? Ah, <laughs> uh, you hear that? It's, oh my gosh. It's the same feeling I got from the Audubon. <laughs> Uh, Look at the police say. We can call them right police now. Police say, like they're gonna help us. Up here. <laughs> oh, they have actual sun beds down there and a pool. Yeah, that's what he said. That oh. was the beach club. Uh oh, they're naked. Pretty sure they're naked. <laughs> oh, yep, yeah, that's someone's butt. I think it area. We're going on the way back, and now I feel a little bit less anxious uh, somehow. It is pretty cool. Germany, it's usual to, to have two or three lanes, or not, not 